Why is knowing the right metrics so important to us? Because they drive your business. Good and accurate metrics present the data in front of you that will let you know how the things are going at present, what areas of work or processes need improvement and even forecast the upcoming situations be it good or bad. Hello everyone, I am Ritik Oni from Management News. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. In this video, I will be talking about metrics in Scrum based projects. So let's get going. Here we will be discussing velocity, velocity charts, burn down charts and burn up charts. Before starting our major topics, let's talk a little about story points. Every team needs a unit of measurement to measure how big or complex a particular work is so that they can determine some estimates for that particular work. Story points are efforts from development team's perspective to fully implement a particular piece of work. Story points measure the size of a product backlog item. The measure of a PBI is defined by many factors like how big is the work to be done, the complexity of the work and other factors affecting the solution, complexity, physical size and the risks involved. Now we can say that story points are the relative units of measure required to say that a work item is done. Okay, so what is velocity and velocity chart? Well, velocity is the measure of work done by a team in a particular time boxed interval or iteration. Let's say that if a team is following scrum, then they term their velocity as the total estimation count of product backlog items or PBIs completed in a sprint. The unit of measure can be story points or hours depending on the estimation model the team is following. Now when we are talking about velocity, we should accept a few things with open mind. First, that velocity is the measurement of output and not the outcome of an iteration. That is. Only the product backlog items completed will be eligible for velocity calculation. Second, by no means we can compare the velocities across teams as velocity is determined by various factors like team size, duration of sprint, product the team is working on, organization's environment, knowledge of the team members, specialization of the team members and many more. Hence, it makes no sense comparing velocity among teams. Third, velocity is not calculated by just one or two sprints, especially if the team is new or immature. Assuming that you have a new team, let your team be comfortable for a few sprints. And once the team has the understanding of the product, the environment and the processes they are working on, then they will be able to gain a sustainable pace over a few sprints. And only after achieving this sustainability, the team can start calculating their velocity. We now know something about velocity. Let's take an example and see how to calculate it. Here we have team A and they are into their 14th sprint. The team is working on a sustainable pace from past few sprints. Let's say they have been estimating in story points. They have their data of how many story points have been delivered from sprint 10 till sprint 14. Now to calculate their velocity, the team will add the story points for these 5 sprints and then divide it by 5 to get the average velocity for the team. In this case, we are getting the velocity as 36. We saw how to calculate the velocity for a team. I think we are now ready to talk about velocity charts. Well, velocity charts are comparison charts for commitment versus delivery for every iteration. Let's see how to read these charts. As we can see here, the blue bar is how much work has been committed and the orange bar depicts how much work has been delivered. Here, y-axis is the measure of work and 
x-axis shows the number of sprints. This particular velocity chart has been generated by the data on the screen of commitment versus delivery over 5 sprints. This velocity chart can be read as after first 2 sprints the team has been catching up for their commitments in the next 3 sprints. In general, velocity charts provide a view if the velocity has been increasing, decreasing or has been constant over a period of time. Well, let's see how effective velocity charts can be. Velocity charts are very effective as these charts depict how the team is performing now and has been performing in the past. Velocity charts are helpful in observing if the team is estimating correctly and making close assumptions over a period of time. Why assumptions? Because the assumptions the team makes and the risk assessment capability determines if they have been estimating correctly or not. Also, velocity charts play a vital role in planning. For example, sprint planning. While doing sprint planning, the team is aware of their velocity, that is, what they can deliver in a sprint. Hence, while planning for the next sprint, the team understands how much work they can pull. Mature teams never pull stories with story points significantly higher than what they have been delivering in the past. Similarly, in release planning, the teams divide the size of release by the average velocity of the team and calculate how many iterations the team will require to complete their release work. Therefore, do add velocity charts in your project reports. It can be sprint end report, quarterly report or any other. While looking at velocity charts, team are able to govern if they have been estimating correctly or not or if they are improving over time. That is, if they are able to increase their velocity gradually, which is good, but expecting a velocity increase after every iteration is a non-possible thing and is counterproductive for the team. Moving ahead, let's now see how to generate and view velocity charts in Jira. Well, velocity charts give a picture of multiple iterations and we calculate it after an iteration or sprint completion. But let's say that we want to track what's happening in between the sprint so that correct measures can be taken at the right time. In this case, we use burn down and burn up charts. We will discuss burn down charts first. So, burn down charts provide a graphical view of remaining work versus the time frame left in the sprint to complete it. As we can see, the same information could have been in a tabular format as shown here. But with charts, it's easier to view this information of how much total work is pending with respect to the number of days left as compared to tabular format. Let us look into one of the burn down charts and learn some basics to read them. Starting with the x-axis, x-axis shows the timeline of the sprint. This chart shows a sprint of 10 days. Y-axis depicts the efforts required to complete the sprint. Here, the team is using story points and there are around 48 total story points to be completed for the current sprint. The line in grey is an ideal line which shows the perfect path to go when burning the daily effort. Whereas the other line marked in red in this chart shows the actual line of the remaining work with respect to the remaining time. This line shows what is happening and how much remaining work is pending in reality. Origin shows the first day of the sprint and end of the grey line shows the last day of the sprint. Note that if a team marks their burnt efforts on daily basis, only then they would be able to view the accurate burn down chart and can reap the benefits from it. Therefore, it is advisable to discuss your burn down chart 
daily in your stand-up meetings. Let's have a look into few observations and patterns that are worth discussing and helpful for the team in their sprint journey. For now, in this video, I will be discussing only two patterns, but I recommend you all to go through my tutorial on how to read and interpret burn down charts. This video is very informative and talks about what to expect from different burn down chart patterns. You can find the link in the description. Okay, coming back. Pattern 1. Burn down charts will help you know if you are lagging behind. For example, if the actual line is above the ideal line, it means that the team is lagging behind. Let's look into the first week of the sprint. At any point of time in this week, the remaining effort is more than it should be. If we look at February 27th, that is towards the end of this week, the remaining effort should have been lesser than 25 story points, but it is slightly more than that. Here, a discussion is required with the team on what all is taking more time than expected. Moving towards the right, that is the second week of the sprint, we can see that the red line is straight and is not moving in downward direction. This kind of graph shows that team is blocked and may need some kind of external help. Pattern 2. This burn down shows that the work started as usual but after a first few days an arcing curve is seen in the chart which might indicate that either the initial estimation of few tasks was not correct or some more scope got added. Again, further investigations will lead to answers. We will now see how to view burn down charts in Jira followed by understanding what are burn up charts. Where burn down charts start with the total amount of work and as they move towards the right in the graph, the remaining work decreases over time. That is, burn down charts focus on remaining work with respect to deadline, while the burn up charts focus on how much work has been completed till now with respect to deadline. Let's try to understand burn up charts with the help of this graph. Here, the X axis shows the timeline and the Y axis shows the amount of work. The black line here is the ideal line on how the graph should move as the sprint proceeds in order to complete all the work in the sprint. And the green line shows how actually the graph is moving. The red line, however, depicts the total work picked up for the sprint. As and when the tasks get completed, the graph is updated with how much work has been done till now. And as we move towards the right in the chart, the green line moves in the upward direction, highlighting that more work has been completed. Towards the end of the sprint, ideally, team should be able to complete all the work and the green line should meet the red and the black line at the top. While burn down charts have their own benefits, burn up charts are quite popular when it comes to identifying scope creeps within the sprint. Scope creeps are changes in the scope of the sprint after the sprint has been started. Let's take an example to identify scope creeps during sprints using burn up charts. Let's say if the scope changes after the third day of the sprint from 300 story points to 400 story points, it will be very clear through the red line of total work on the top. With that, let's move ahead and see from where we can view burn up charts in Jira. That was all I wanted to discuss in this video. If you like the video, please press like, share it more and more. If you are new to this channel or you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Bye for now and thank you for watching.